country. All air crews are issued with white silk gloves, woolen gloves, leather gauntlets, knee-length flying boots, and Irvin flying jackets. These are to be used in any combination, depending on the weather. Generally, you will be issued with two tunics, two pairs of trousers, a pullover, two shirts and separate collars, two vests and underpants, webbing belts, haversacks, and a water bottle. With kit bags on shoulders, the recruits can only watch in wonder at the precision of the boys ahead. Depots have been set up in many different locations across the country, but wherever you report, the system will be the same. For air crew, the Sidcot suit is an essential. It has a warm inner, a waterproof outer, and a fur collar. Once you are enlisted, you will become part of a disciplined team able to march together, live together, and fight together. training camp, you will be supervised every minute of your new life. The initial drill is the foundation on which your efficiency is built. Whatever your ultimate rank and whatever your ultimate duty in the RAF, it is your duty to your mind and your body to react to immediate instructions. Physical fitness will be the order of the day. Drill and physical training will give you that efficiency and keenness with which all your work must be carried out. Fit force is an efficient force. You will learn to recognize aircraft in the air. It is vital that you learn the difference between friendly aircraft and enemy aircraft. It will be no good being sorry if you have inadvertently shot down one of your friends because you didn't recognize whether he was a friend or a foe. If you are air crew, you will need to know how to use your lifeline in an emergency, your parachute. It is essential for you to understand how to put on your complicated harness correctly. If you become a pilot, you will fly in this machine sooner or later. The link trainer is a device which is widely used for ground instruction in instrument flying. It resembles a small aeroplane built round an exact replica of an aeroplane's cockpit. The cockpit is provided with a hood so that blind conditions can be reproduced and is fully equipped 
with all the normal controls and instruments of an aeroplane. These are ingeniously linked so that the actual flying conditions are reproduced when the student pilot sits inside the trainer and flies it under the hood. Flight simulation has become accepted as a valuable tool for initial pilot training. The Link trainer was developed in the late 1920s by Edwin Link. Link employed technology and components used in the manufacture of player pianos to build his first flight trainer. The Link is serving well as a device that simulates flight, but it does not simulate the flight of any specific aircraft. This is not a problem when training students to learn to fly basic training aircraft, such as the Tiger Moth. On this particular aircraft, you can clearly see the hood behind the pilot. This can be closed to enable a blind flying exercise where the young flyer has to rely solely on his instruments as he cannot see out of the cockpit once he is in the air. After learning to fly, as aircrew, you will master their advanced aircraft at Operational Conversion Units, OCUs. Here, it has been found that mistakes in aircraft handling and operation has resulted in the damage and loss of valuable frontline aircraft. Here is the place that you will hone your skills. The Oxbox or Airspeed Oxford is the most likely aircraft you will train on. This is the RAF's first twin-engine low-wing monoplane trainer. She entered service at the Central Flying School in 1937. The Mark II Oxford is used to train pilots, radio operators and navigators. So if you are destined to fly bombers or any large transport aircraft, you will certainly train in the Oxbox. The Mark I version is a weapons trainer and is usually fitted with a dorsal gun turret which will allow you to practice firing a machine gun in the air. you will be required to fly many sorties. By February 1940, the German Luftwaffe have no air bases on the continent within reasonable range of Britain. So although the RAF has managed to shoot down a small number of German bombers on lone sorties, this period has become known as the Phony War. Part of your training will be learning to fly in formation in all flyable weather conditions. After a sortie, you will need to evaluate all you have learned on your flying mission. Despite a very slow start, we are reliably informed that aircraft production is now reaching over 300 a month. This is due to the unerring dedication of Britain's men and women in the aircraft factories dispersed all over the country and in the Commonwealth. Factories are now working 24 hours a day in shifts to keep the aircraft coming.
we are also informed that bomber daylight operations are to continue into mid-1940 in spite of appalling casualty rates,